Hi everyone, welcome back to DSL Design Series. So till now we have implemented HashMap. Okay, we have implemented stack with the help of two queues. We have implemented stack with the help of just one queue, and today we are going to implement queue with the help of two stacks. Okay, today we are going to complete this my queue function. Here we have four function: push function, pop function, peak function, and empty function. Okay, so let's go to whiteboard and let's see how we can do this question. We want to implement these four functionalities. And we have to use stack for this. So I will create a stack. This is my stack and I will name it first. Okay. I will also draw a queue just to give you the perspective of how things will work in the queue. And then we will try to implement the same with the help of the stack. Okay. So this is my queue. And from I will push value from the back. I will take out values from the front. Okay. Okay. And in stack, we push value from the top and we take out values from the top. Okay. So let me also write down a test case here. Okay. Then we will work for that test case. So my test case is first I will push one. Then I will push two. Push three. Push four. And let's say I will call pop. After that, after that, I will call peak. Then I will call push five. After that, push six. And then at last, let's call pop. I think this is enough. Okay, so this is my test case. Second, yeah, this is my test case. Now, let's start. Let's iterate over this test case. First, I have to push one, right? I have to push one. So how can I push value in my in my queue? I can simply push value from the back of my queue, right? So this is how I will push one. Now I have to implement this push functionality with the help of the stack. How can I implement this push functionality with the help of my stack? By simply by simply pushing value in my stack, right? I can simply push one in my stack, right? The next is push two. So we will push. This is how we will push value in my queue. And in stack, we'll simply push value in my stack from the top, right? Okay, for three, we'll push value from the back in our queue. And we can represent this uh, with the help of stack by pushing value in my stack. Okay. Now, next is push four. We will simply push value from the back of the queue. And we can represent this by pushing value in my stack. Okay. After these four functions, our queue will look like this and our stack will look something like this. Okay. Now we have pop, pop function. Now we have pop function. But before calling this pop function, let's observe a few things. Okay. What is the order? What is the order in which I will pop out elements from my queue? Let me write down the order in which I will pop out elements for my queue. The order is what? First, I can pop out this one. Right, then I can pop out this two, then I can pop out this three, and at last I can pop out the four. Correct? Okay. What is the order in which I can pop out values from my first stack? The order is first I will pop out this four, then I can pop out this three, then two, and then one. You can see, you can see both the orders, this order and this order, both are different. Right? Both the orders are different. In fact, this order is the reverse of this order. Right? So, so, one thing we can say, one thing we can say after looking the orders, one thing we can say for sure that I cannot access this one without popping these three elements. Right? Okay. If I want to call this pop function for my queue, it means I have to pop the front value of my queue. So the first value I will pop is this one, right? And in my stack, if I want to pop this one, I have to pop these three elements first, right? So this is the issue because I want to access this one, but I cannot access this one without popping these three elements, right? Okay. Now this is where a new stack will help us. Okay, this is where the new stack can help us. So I will create 
a one more stack here. I will create a stack here. Okay, this is a new stack which I will create. Let's name this stack second. Let's name this stack second. So what I will do, as I can see, the order in which I will pop out element from this queue is one, two, three, four. And the order in which I can pop out element from the stack is what? Four, three, two, one. Both are reverse of each other. So if I will reverse this order, if I will reverse this order, I can get the order in which we will pop out elements from our queue. Right. So how can I reverse this order? I can simply take out values from this stack and I can simply push it here. Again, take out values from this stack and can simply push it here. Take out value from this stack. Push it into the second stack. Take out value from the first stack and push it to the second stack. Okay. Now let's see what is the order in which we will take out values from a second stack. Let's see. So the order in which we will take out values from the second stack is what? One, two, three, and four. Okay. So you can see this order and this order are now equivalent. Okay. Both the orders are same. So now if I want to pop any elements from my queue, what will happen? This one will get popped out and we can simply return one from here. Okay. This pop function will pop out this one and will return one from here, right? Now, if I want to implement this pop function with the help of these two stacks, what I can do, I can simply access this one now, right? Because I have reversed the order. So now I can access the one. Okay. So in this case, now I will create a variable val. I will store this one in that variable. Okay. Then I will pop out this one and then I can return this val and this is how I will implement this pop function with the help of two stacks. Okay. Okay. So why I am using the second stack here? I am using the second stack to create an order to create a sequence, which is equivalent to the sequence in which we will pop out elements from my queue. Okay. That's why I'm using a second stack here. Okay. So now we know how we can pop out element from my stack. Okay. From my stack. Okay. Let's talk about this peak function now. Now I have to implement this peak function. What this peak function will do for this queue? This peak function will return the two because two is my front element. So this peak function will simply return two. And if I have to implement this with the help of these two stacks, what I will do, I will check my order, right? Because I have some order, which I've maintained in my second stack, right? The order in which we will pop out elements, correct? So I will simply check my second stack. What is my top topmost element? This topmost element represent the front element of the queue, right? You can see this two and there's two, right? Two is the front element, right? This top element represent the front element of the queue. So I will create a variable val. I will give this variable val value two, and then I will simply return val done. This is how we will implement this peak function. Okay. It was easy, right? Okay. Let me raise it. Now, if I want to push five, how can I push five? I already told you. If I want to push five, uh, this is how our queue will look like after pushing five. Now I have to implement this push functionality. I will simply push five in my first stack. I've already told you, right? If you want to push any value, you just push that value in the first stack. Okay. Next push six. Okay. Our queue will look like this after pushing six. And if I have to push six here, I will simply push the value in my first stack. Okay. I will simply push the value in my first stack. Okay, let's talk about this pop function. So if I will call this pop function for my queue, what will happen? This pop function will pop out this two and will return 
this too. Right. Okay, now I have to implement the same with the help of these two stacks. So now I can see I already have some order in my second stack, right? I already have some order. So I will simply pop out my topmost element. Okay, this is how I will implement the pop function. I will simply create a variable val. I will store this value in my variable val. Then I will pop out this two. Okay. And then I will return this val. Okay, this is how you will implement this pop function. Okay, let me increase my test cases. Let me increase the test cases. Let me write down few more test cases there. Uh, let's call one more pop function, then one more pop function. And then let's call one more pop function. Okay. Okay, so if I will again call the pop function, if I will again call this pop function, what will happen? What will happen? This pop function will pop out this three from my queue and also return three. Right. Okay. And if I have to implement this with the help of these two stacks, what I will do, I will create a variable val. I will store this three into my variable val and then I will pop out this three. Right. Okay. Let's talk about this pop function. If I will call this pop function for my queue, what will happen? This pop function will, uh, will pop out this four and will return four. Okay. And let's implement this pop function with the help of these stacks. What will happen? We will pop out this four and we'll return this four. Right? Simple. Now, let's again call this pop function. But now we don't have any order with us. Right? We don't have any order with us now because we don't like we don't have any values in our second stack. Now what we will do? Now we will do the exact same thing what we did. The last time we call the pop function, not last time, the first time we call the pop function, right? What we did when we first time call the pop function, we, to we took out all the values from the first stack, right? And we pushed it into the second stack. Why? To create the reverse order. Now this is the order in which the things will get popped out from a queue. Okay. You can see the order in which we will pop out elements from a queue is what? Five, six. And the order in which we will pop out elements from a stack is what? Five, six. Right. Both the same. Both are same. Right. Both are same. Yes. So now I have to convert out all the values from the first stack and push it into my second stack. Okay. Now I can call this pop function. So this pop function will simply pop out this five and will also return the five. Okay. Of course, here also pop out the five and return the five. Done. So this is how you will implement these four functionalities. Okay, we have to talk about this empty function, which is easy. We will simply check both our stacks. If both our stacks are empty, it means our queue is empty. Okay, it means a queue is empty, we'll return true. Otherwise, we will return false. Okay, it was simple. So yeah, this is how you will implement these four functionalities. Okay. So let's, let's code it now. Okay. Let's code. Okay. So first what I will do, I will create two stacks. Stack number first stack. Number one, we'll call this uh, first stack. Number two, we'll call it second. Okay. In constructor function, we'll do nothing. In push function we will simply push value in what in stack number first. And first stack, okay. Push what x empty function. We will simply check both the stacks. If first dot size is equals to zero and and second dot size is equals to equals to zero, it means it means both our stack are empty. It means our queue is empty. So we'll return true. Yes, our queue is empty. Otherwise, we will return false. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about this pop function now. Okay, let me draw both the stacks here. So let's say we have one, two, and three. Okay. If my second stack is empty, okay, if my second stack is empty, what we will do? We will take out values from here and we will push it here to reverse the order. Okay, so here we will have three, two, one. Okay. And if our second stack is not empty, then we will not push any value to a second stack. Okay. So first we have to check 
if our second stack is empty or not, second dot size greater than zero. If it is not empty, what we will do? We will create a variable val. We will store the topmost value in that variable, uh, second dot top. Then we will pop the topmost value, second dot pop. And then we will simply return that variable val. Otherwise, what we will do? We will take out all the values from our first stack and we'll push it to our second stack to reverse the order, right? So while first dot size is greater than zero, what we will do, we will do second dot push, push word, first dot top. And then we will also pop that value from our first stack. So first dot pop, right? After this, I have like, after filling all the values in a second stack, we will repeat these three things. Like we'll create a variable, we'll store the top value in that variable, then we'll return that variable, done. Okay, now about this peak function, it is almost same, right? It is almost same. So I will copy this code here. Okay, now what I will do, I will just remove this statement because in peak function, we only have to return the topmost value from our second stack, right? We don't have to pop out that value. So I will just erase this statement. Okay, so yeah, done. So you're done. Okay, let me run this code. And let's see if there are any if there are any errors or not. Okay, it is getting accepted. Let's submit it. Okay, so it is working. It is working. Okay, let's talk about the complexity now. Of course, the space complexity is O of n because let's say we have pushed n values and we are creating two stacks. Okay. Doesn't matter two stack, one stack, five stack, the uh, complexity is O of n. Okay. Now about this push function, the complexity is constant O of one because we are just pushing a value here, right? Okay. And about this empty function, the complexity is also O of one constant because here also we are just taking the size and we are returning to or false. That's it, right? And the complexity of both the pop function and the peak function is O of one in worst case, right? So why, why, why O of n? Because we have, let's say, n elements in our stack, right? And what we are doing here, in worst case, we are taking out all the elements from this stack and we're pushing it here, right? So yeah, that's why the complexity is O of n. That's it for this video. And if you really like my explanation, please like and subscribe to my channel. Please do comment on my videos because your comments will really motivate me to make better videos. And yeah, thanks for watching and keep putting the next video props. Thank you.